Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the 4-Way Traffic Light PLC program, Easy PLC. Now traffic lights are used just about everywhere on busy roads around the world. They can help prevent traffic accidents and keep traffic flowing smoothly in the right direction by regulating the flow of cars, trucks, and other vehicles. The most common type of traffic light uses red, yellow, and green lights along with arrows or flashes to indicate which uh, way each lane of traffic should proceed when the light changes from green to yellow or red. Now you can visually see the four-way traffic light by using the Easy PLC software suite. This provides an easy way of learning PLC programming. And using the five steps for PLC programming development, we will discuss and show how to program this traffic light. We will be using an automation direct click PLC for this application, but the general methods can be used for just about any PLC on the market. Four traffic lights and pedestrian panels with push buttons will be used. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the first step of PLC program development is to determine what must be done. So we have to define the task. Traffic light control is a good way to learn PLC programming. The common four-way traffic light intersection is generally well understood as to what must happen. Each direction will have a red, green, and yellow light. Timers and outputs in the PLC operate in a sequence to control the operation of each light in all directions. The Easy PLC software suite contains this traffic light example in the machine simulator. So if we go into the machine simulator that we have here on the screen, we can either hit the start or we can go to the machines here and we will scroll down to the traffic light. If we just click on it, you will notice that we have on the left hand corner exactly what must be done. But we also have a demo mode and in the demo mode, it will actually show us what actually is happening. So here's my demo mode right here. And you can see here that we have our green light. It will go to yellow, then red. And then the other way will then go to green, yellow, and red. And we have our pedestrian here that we can hit and have them cross. So this is how the logic actually works. Now the second step is to define the inputs and outputs of our easy plc traffic light now the inputs and outputs define how information is transmitted between a programmable logic controller or plc with other devices one input can be used to send status information from one device such as a sensor into the plc now the view io at the bottom here of the machine simulator window will display the inputs and outputs required um, for this traffic light uh, application. So we can see how the inputs here are actually running. So, and what I like to do is we will actually take a look at um, the actual IO. And when we look on the screen here, you can see that this is my uh, number one here, uh, light number one, my red, yellow, and green. Number two is on this side, and we have three and four. Then the same thing applies with our crossing. Here's our number one. And then this is number four crossing, number two crossing, and then number three crossing. So getting the inputs and outputs correct is a good, uh, is the second step of our, of our program development. Now the third step is developing a logical sequence of operation. Now, a PLC programmer must know everything about the sequence and operation of the machine before programming. And that's what makes traffic lights an excellent way to learn programmable controlling or programmable controllers because most people know exactly how they work. However, a flowchart or sequence table is used to fully understand the process that needs to be controlled. And they usually answer questions like what happens when electrical power and or pneumatic air is lost? What happens when input and output devices fail? Do we need redundancy? There's a number of different things that this answers for us. 
This step is where you're going to spend most of your time understanding everything about the operation it will save you time. It will help prevent these from prevent you from continuously rewriting your PLC program logic. Knowing all the answers of how the system is to react is vital in the development of the PLC program. So here is the sequence table for our traffic light. And what I've done is wrote everything I possibly know on there along with some notes. And then we just sort of condensed it all down. And we really understood that what we have is a one second or during the first second of operation, we have all of the red lights on. Then for the next five seconds, we will have traffic lights one and, and two on. And then we will have in the next three seconds, we will have the yellow on for both one and two. And all the while, three and four would be red. Then we have this extra one second here overlap where they're all red again. This prevents any accidents from happening. Then we have five second green for our three and four. And again, the red is on one and two. And then we have three seconds for the yellow. And then the sequence starts back with the one second overlap once again. So fully understanding how this works, then we have an idea of how we can develop the Click PLC program, which is our next step. So again, we spend most of the time here fully understanding and addressing and looking at how that logic is going to work. So let's go back to our machine simulator. Here we go. And again, the demo mode here that we are running in our machine simulator again shows exactly what has to happen and gives us a good idea of how we're going to program our unit. So the next thing we will do is, like we said, the next step is develop the Click PLC program for Easy PLC Traffic Light, which is step number four. So we'll call up our Click programming software, which is right here. And if we go into the setup mode and we'll look at the communication ports and we will go to port number one, which is our ethernet port, you will see that we have a static IP address, which is 192.168.1.230. This is important to know when we are connecting to our Modbus TCP in our easy PLC. So again, once we have that set, we will just hit OK. And now we are set to program our um, unit. So from our logical step here, OK, in this um, a, now basically a program logic controller or abbreviated PLC is in a industrial computer that has been programmed to perform a variety of automated tasks based on various inputs and outputs. They are commonly used in manufacturing, construction, energy distribution, and process control applications. In basic terms, the latter logic programming language is used to instruct its functions as well as operations what must take place that certain condition arises. Using the information from the previous step, now we can program our Click PLC. So you'll see here that what we've done is we've set up a general timer here with 18 seconds. And it's 18 seconds because we are using a millisecond time base rate. So this automatically self resets after the 18 seconds. So it's continuously updating. If we go back to our sequence tables, you can see here that we have our time accumulated is up to 18. So we want the one second overlap, five second green, three second yellow, one second uh, overlap or red again, then green five seconds in the other way, and then three seconds for the yellow. So a total time of 18 seconds. So in our program here, you can see that we are doing 18 seconds and continuously moving it. Then we look at traffic lights one and two. So everything now is based on that time base rate of what has to happen. So if it's less than a second 
or greater than nine seconds, we're gonna have our traffic light on one and two be red. Then we are going to have our yellow when it is greater than six seconds and less than nine seconds. And then we are going to have it green when we are greater than one second and less than six seconds. And you can actually see the operation. We go red, then after the red, it will go green, yellow, then red again. So we can kind of see this before we even connect it to our easy PLC, how that's going to function. Then what we have is our lights from three and four. So if we're less than um, 10 seconds, then we have the red light on for three and four. If we are greater than um, 15 seconds, then we have our yellow lights on because we said that from 15 to 18, we have those three seconds. Then we have our green light and the green light will be, um, has to be greater than 10 seconds, but less than 15 seconds. And then it will have our green light on, which gives us our five second duration. Then we look at our crosswalks. So that handles our basic operation for our lights operation. Then we look at our pedestrian box and we look at crosswalk number one and two at the same time. Now the crosswalks themselves, they will operate individually. However, there are some commonalities between each one. So we have pedestrian box one and two push buttons. And you'll see that we have, if it's not red, so that means if um, a pedestrian comes up and hits the crosswalk and it's green or yellow on, on that direction, then we allow the pedestrian box to work. This ensures that we get a full cycle. So it will set C1. You'll see now that when um, the beginning of the yellow, it will reset C1. So that means the yellow in the opposite direction. So that means it's going to change. So that's C1. And then when we have C1 and we have both lights red, so that's the two lanes of traffic for that crosswalk. And we have C1, we can actually turn on that pass. And we do the same thing for two. Then our logic continues with crosswalk three and four, the same type of scenario we set it and then we look for the traffic light yellow to reset that condition and we ensure that traffic light three and four are red in order to turn on the pass box for three and four so that that pedestrian can cross that street then we have our end statement so what we do is we download that and we're all set the next thing we have to do is take a look at our address picker and in our address picker, we will see the addresses that we are using for these green, uh, these lights, as well as the crosswalks. So our inputs are coming from X 101. And in order to display our Modbus, which we're going to communicate Modbus TCP to the unit, you can see here that my X 101 starts at 33. So that is the number that we start with, which is pedestrian box number two. So we have to make a note of that so that we can put that into our easy PLC program. And if we look at our outputs, our outputs here, traffic light red starts at address 8225. And then we have our pedestrian box one all the way down to pedestrian box one. So we have 16 uh, actual outputs that we're setting. So currently right now, you can see that we're in a run mode and we're all set to go. So let's take a look at our going back to our uh, easy PLC right now. We're still in our demo mode. We'll just exit to our main. And when we do, what we will do is we will hit the start and we will go down to our traffic and we'll also hit start. So now we're going to connect our 
easy PLC up to our controller. But you'll notice the traffic's running. Let's turn on the IO and we'll just stop the traffic so ensure that we don't have any crashes. There we go. So now all the traffic has stopped and we can simulate the inputs and outputs from here as well as any box inputs. Um, we can turn on the uh, passing if we want. You can see that light up. So this is all without the PLC connected. But we want to connect our PLC to test our program. So let's go into the IO drivers and we will select the Modbus driver. We will hit configure. And on the configure, what you will see is we have our IP address that we had previously looked at on our Click PLC with the commonality port of 502, which is common for a Modbus. We have our starting address here, which will be 8223, and we have 17 inputs. Now I know we said there's 16, but you'll notice that the first input is actually not used at all. Same with outputs. We have five of them. Our starting address is 31. We're not using any analog in or analog out in this particular unit and there's no scaling. So that is our Modbus setting. We'll just hit OK. That will bring back our inputs, our driver outputs and our driver inputs. And then what we can do is actually marry this up to our PLC inputs and PLC outputs this way. Or we can actually allow the driver to go to that or do it ourselves and just say automatic assignment. So that puts all of the variables in and you can see that input here. The first one's not used and the first output's not used in our in our scenario here. Then we hit exit and we'll start driver and exit. What this will do is automatically now connect to the PLC and you can see our driver is connected. We have our um, UIO. We can see exactly what's happening. And we can test now our program and ensure that it is running the way we want. So there's my yellows. I should have an overlap and then it starts the other way. I will press my pedestrian button. So next time this turns red, I should have pedestrian walking here, which is exactly what it's doing. So developing the control um, sees if your program actually works or not. And if not, you need to do some debugging. This can be easily as re-downloading re or re-uploading your program and, or as complicated as redesigning your logic altogether by going back to your uh, logic steps and going through them again. Now, when using Easy PLC, debugging is easier done because there's no damage to any equipment. And you may have to modify your logic several times before you get everything right. That's okay, it's all part of learning how to program the PLC. And however, trial and error is often easier said than done. So you can practice your modifications debugging uh, the traffic light in the following way. Go ahead and try to add a three second flashing green for traffic light three. You will also have to change the pedestrian signals to ensure that you are not allowing them to pass at the time. Let me know how you make out in the comments below. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.